so here I am guys back on YouTube with a review of my new handlebars I'm still in decision mode whether or not this is something I think is great or not so great I went with if you can't tell the 14 inch tall KST Comanches they're a quality bar inch and a half in diameter uh, they work perfect with stock cables and wiring as you can see the cables aren't even really stretched so the fitment of them is great the one thing that I have to really learn to adjust my mind to not so much my body I got plenty of body here my arms are long enough is the the width of these bars I think if they were just a little narrower maybe I don't know I don't I don't know if you can make them narrower I don't think but regardless I am totally not used to riding with the bar this wide. I'm, I'm going to have to measure what the width is from the center of the grip to the center of the grip from left to right because these things are wide. I've never ridden with grips this wide before. I have sat on other bikes before. I've sat on some Indians with KST bars, never rode with them. I've sat on some Harleys with um, factory 47s that I think are the same height and width as these. I remember sitting probably 15 years ago at uh, Battlefield Harley in Gettysburg during either a bike week or a bike night. I was down there talking to a guy who had a fat boy and he had put Carlini gangster apes on it and he let me sit on it just so I could get a feel for it. And these bars are very, very similar to what to the way those gangster apes felt to me back then I know 15 years ago is a long way off maybe I don't remember quite accurately but I tell you I remember them bars being really wide the grip angle was good the height was okay but the bars were wide as can be these bars totally bring me back to that fat boy I was sitting on years ago with uh, Carlini gangster apes on them so if you're familiar with what gangster apes felt like, maybe you'd get a good idea in your head as what these bars feel like. Not a bad thing, just completely different than what I'm used to. For years now, I've been riding a Victory Kingpin with bars that was just below my heart level. So they were like down here, probably four to six inches shorter. And I don't know how wide they are. Maybe it's just all... Uh, I don't know, an illusion to me. Maybe they just feel wider to me because they're higher. Very well could be. But regardless, these things feel really wide. I rode them home from the uh, shop this morning. Did a couple of smaller S turns closer to where I live. And the handling seems pretty good with these. I don't really feel like I've lost anything by going to these bars as far as the, the, dyna the dynamics of the motorcycle or even my input with the bike. I feel almost as if it's the same bar as far as handling and turn in and stability goes. I don't feel like I've lost a thing with these. So it's a good thing that they didn't negatively impact the dynamic handling nature of this motorcycle because this, man this thing is a handler. It's it's great in curves and turns and it's great in a straight line too but uh, if I'd have put these on here and they would have been something that I felt was a negative impact I probably would have turned around and said take them off put my stock bars back on so I'm not going to go that route I'm going to ride with them for the few short rides I have left this season because it's getting cold first frost was last night here in northern Ohio so I'm only going to be able to get on this thing a few more times before it gets pushed into the corner and battery tender hooked up and cover over it for the winter. Depressing as that sounds. But I'm going to I'm going to hit a couple rides with them today. I don't know about tomorrow. It looks kind of cloudy. In Ohio, if it's cloudy and, and gray, that means it's going to rain. So I'm going to catch up with you here in a few miles trying to head east into the next county so I could find some S-curves because I live in a pancake as 
I famously say in my videos that the area of Ohio that I live in is flat and straight. It's literally like riding around on a pancake. So I gotta go 20 miles or so east or south or southeast just to hit some decent curves. So I'm gonna quit blabbing here for a few minutes and hit the throttle, get into the, uh, the nicer riding areas that I'm familiar with. Coming back at you here, just as I'm starting to get into a curvy stretch of the road here, and it never fails. Like, you, I could bet my life that every time I ride this short few mile stretch road, I get behind slow cars. And directly in front of me is what looks like a Prius or something nerdy like that. And then someone pulling a trailer, but at least they're turning off. But I know there's, there's something else in, in front of me up here. I almost guarantee you I'm gonna hit into something that wants to go 20 mile an hour under the limit and the limit's already pretty slow. I just have a feeling. But so far so good. I'm adjusting pretty well to these bars. They are starting to feel a little more natural to me. That's a good thing. And I notice you are, uh, Safety Nazis out there, you probably notice that I'm riding without gloves on. I hardly ever wear gloves. And it's simply because I can't find a pair of gloves that doesn't make it feel like I'm trying to grip a, a telephone pole when I'm riding. Like, the leather in the palm of the gloves, plus the grip, makes it feel like it's about 15 inches in diameter in my hand. And I despise the way that feels. I have less control of the bike when I wear gloves and I think about how that feels all the time when I'm wearing gloves so it's a risk that I will assume and I'll take it to feel more at ease when I'm riding so even on cold days it's, the bike says it's 59 degrees here now so you couple in 60 mile an hour wind hitting your hands at 59 degrees and that's pretty pretty darn chilly uh air temperatures but it's worth it to have a level of comfort that I prefer and there are my two vehicles that I knew would be in front of me if this guy doesn't make it right and turn back in here so I get the tractor and trailer to pull out in front of me. Thankfully not. He stayed in. Thank you, Mr. Cisco System. There comes a little bit of a sweeper here. I never know what's on the other side of this curve, so I always take take it a little cautiously. So again, this bike definitely has some great handling dynamics or characteristics. And the bars have not taken away from that at all. All it's done is put my hands in a wider, higher position. So that's a big win. And I think my back and my shoulders are already thanking me for bringing my arms up another six inches or so. The stock bars even raised up as high as they will go for a person my height were still causing me to slouch some. So my back is was definitely something that was coming an issue. No, I just crossed over the line there, so I guess I'm not used to these bars just yet. Beautiful down th through here, these trees. Northern Ohio's got some pretty trees. Nothing like Pennsylvania where I'm from, but uh, riding back through here, it's going to be beautiful here in a few weeks. The colors are going to start popping. This bike, again, is just, I'm not used to it yet, uh, which is to say I'm not used to how good this thing handles. I'm still under riding it. I'm not pushing it to its limit at all yet because I'm just not used to something being able to, to be pushed as hard as this bike 
can be pushed. It, it's a beast with its performance capabilities. The lean angle on you have to look them up. I have no idea what the lean angle is on it. Every bike I've ever owned, I've eventually learned the limits on it anyway. You hit a curve hard enough, especially on any bike with floorboards, and you're going to be grinding your floorboards on the blacktop, and it usually scares the crap out of you. You end up uh, overreacting due to it, and you take away some of your fun. So, I still will continue to not ride this thing like a like a jerk it's a good riding good handling bike with more power than you ever really need on a 900 pound machine so this thing in stage one condition is just phenomenal I'll eventually do some kind of performance to it I know I will I'm kind of a performance minded rider that's why I'm on a challenger so I know that uh, a Lloyd's tune or an RVS tune or a Mad Monkey tune, one of those three will eventually be put in this bike so I can wind it out a little bit more. But to be God's honest truth, it's pretty satisfying with just a set of slip-on mufflers. This thing has got tons of power. Tons of power. No need, no real need to push this bike any higher. Now, you may want to push it higher, I don't blame you, so have at it, I'm not telling you not to, I'm just trying to be realistic when I tell you that the power that this thing gives you from the factory is adequate, it's actually more than adequate. So if you've made it this far in the video, I've been kind of long-winded and doing a lot of talking and whatnot. I try to keep my videos shorter. But if you've made it this far and you've not got tired of hearing me yak, thanks for riding along on this cool Friday morning here in northern Ohio. Well, I guess it's afternoon now. It's almost 1 o'clock. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? So anyway, thanks for coming along with me and doing a test drive on with my new handlebars, guys. So far... I call it a win for this. It's not a big win, but it's a win. Uh, well, maybe it is a big win. Who knows? You tell me what you think. Uh, I don't think the bike handles any worse, or at least the characteristics of the handling weren't negatively impacted by the addition of the bars. At all. My back probably, most definitely is uh, straighter and I think I'll have better posture on it over a uh, all-day ride and let's just be honest they look just absolutely badass and the funny thing about it is when I ordered these I ordered chrome the polished version I thought that they would tie the chrome trim on the bike together real well after they were installed last night my uh, mechanic at Pearl Performance sent me a picture of it and I'm like are those black he's like oh they're definitely black I was just shocked he asked me why and I told him what I, I ordered chrome he says uh they look good the way they are be glad that they're black and he's right I think chrome bars would have looked fine but I would have had to switch over to chrome mirrors chrome switch housing I'd have had several hundred dollars more changing over all the trim on the bars had I gone chrome so yeah they're, they're black and it was a surprise but you know I'm glad I went black, and I'll close on that note. Come back for more uh, Indian Challenger and motorcycle-related videos, guys. Thanks for riding along.